so much thing I think I'm gonna do with the Dr. Tower. Well, we say good morning and praise the Lord. Again, we are grateful uh, to be back into your presence once more. Certainly, we are grateful to the Lord Jesus who has extended our lives and blessed us with the presence of our minds, uh, the strength and activity of our bodies. And uh, we certainly have a reasonable portion of strength. And so we honor him because we realize that if it wasn't because of him, we wouldn't be here. Uh, for the word of God encourages us to know that it's in him. Mm -hmm. We move, we breathe, and we have our very being. And we know that if he withdrew himself from us, we would cease to be. For again, the word says, and he blew the breath of life into us and we became a living soul. So without the breath of life, uh, we realize that we can't continue. Even an artificial breath does not do what the breath of God does. Uh, so we are grateful to him. We honor him because he is just so wonderful. Man, there <laughs> isn't a God like him. You know, he is all powerful. He is all knowing. But yet he is abundantly full of mercy he is compassionate he extends his grace and we realize we don't deserve any of it but it's because of his love well again his word reminds us that he loves the world so much mm -hmm. that he gave his son and his son gave his life that we might even have an opportunity to the right to the tree of life we honor our pastor as always uh, we're certainly grateful uh, to God for the man of God here. We praise God always for uh, just being able to sit with him as we endeavor by the help of the Lord to study together and certainly to share a word of encouragement to you out of the living word of God. For it is alive yes, it is. and well. Hmm. For the word of God says it is sharper than any two-edged sword. 
and we know that it will do. It will do exactly what God sends it to do. We have to humble ourselves and do what it is that God has called us to do. Again, we invite you to join in with our study as we be, uh, continue in the God of deliverance. And uh, grab your word, follow along with us. You know, we share some things even in our title and our opening as we open these lessons. But if you uh, will follow along with us, you can see what the word says uh, for yourself. We're not just, we, we're not wanting to just throw scriptures at you. We want you to find them. And then we want you to run the threads on the scriptures for greater understanding. So join us. Pray along with us as God will bless us to do what he's called us to do. Again, we say praise the Lord and good morning to you. And we thank God again for another rich privilege and opportunity that he has blessed us and allowed us even to come before you to bring his word unto you. We thank God again, fellow Witherspoon, and uh, God blessing us to be together, to uh, use us as a conduit just to bring a word and understanding to you. And as I listen to him um, explain or describe the goodness of God and how wonderful God is in our lives, I can relate to everything he's saying because, you know, what God is to me. And But then one time I didn't understand all that. One time I couldn't agree because I didn't know because slavery had me so bound and tied up. I didn't understand God or, or the wonderful things that he had in store for me. But I thank God that he uh, spared our lives and allowed us to uh, be able to um, be partakers of his love and partakers of his goodness. And, and what we want to do through our lessons is try to help those that don't know, help those that have not tasted the goodness of God to see just how good God is. And the Bible says that all of us were saying, get your Bible so you can read along. And it says, oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good, that through uh, our illustrations and through our teachings or, or just the word that one will be willing to try just to see just how good God is. And I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed if you just only take that step for for September 11th, um, uh, 2022. Again, our series, The God of Deliverance. And our title for the day is Leaving Slavery. Leaving Slavery. We have our focus verse is Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 2. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in I will prepare him an inhabitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. Our lesson text is coming from Exodus chapter 7, verses 1 through 7, chapter 12, verses 11 through 17, chapter 50, verses, no, excuse me, uh, verses 50 and 51. Also chapter 14 of Exodus, uh, verses 26 through 31, and also chapter 15, verses 1 through 2. Truth about God. The Lord is more powerful than things holding us in bondage. Truth for my life. I will celebrate my deliverance from being slave to sin. Our lesson will be about icebreaker. Have you ever had a, uh, have you ever made a, a difficult move, a new home, a new job, and explain what made it difficult? With our lesson outline, the plagues exposed Egypt's false god. The plagues made the Lord known to Egypt. I will fear and believe the Lord. The Lord made a distinction between Israel and Egypt. Effects of the plague, the blood of the lamb protects those who applied it. I will apply the blood of the lamb to my life. The Passover commemorated, com commemorated Israel's deliverance. The Lord spoiled the Egyptians and destroyed their enemy. I will celebrate my deliverance from sin. Precious Father in heaven, we come this morning to say thank you again for another privilege, another op opportunity that you have blessed us to be on this platform, O oh God, to deliver your word, to uh, declare the goodness of the Lord. Bless us, Lord, as we sit now, God, that you speak to us, that we speak to your people in clarity and simplicity, that they may understand, O oh God, the plan that you have for our lives and the things that you have done and willing to do for us now. Lord Jesus, bless us through our teaching that we help reach those that does not recognize where they are right now, recognize that they're in bondage. Because I know so many times it don't feel like it, sound like it, even look like it. 
But, oh, God, it's by our spiritual man, oh, God. Bless us, O oh Lord, that we bring the words that you give, God, that we may recognize, God, that there's something different, that we may recognize that we don't have the control that we think we have. You bless, O oh God, through these teachings, O oh God, that we recognize, God, that there uh, uh, is a better way, there's a better life than this. And, Lord, we want to do better. Lord, help us see, Lord, that you allow things to happen in our lives to help us see, God, that you don't want us to be where we are. And, Lord, when we recognize these things, bless us that we may make a move according to your directions and according to your Holy Spirit. Now, Father, use us for this day. Do it for your glory and for your honor. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God of deliverance. Our first lesson was slaves can be delivered. Slaves can be delivered. Lesson today, leaving slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, so... It is an action that we have to desire to change, to move away from where we are uh, when we understand that there is a place that God desires us to be, leaving slavery. Uh, we know slavery from our past history, uh, and it is, you know, it is that condition of being enslaved. Um, but, you know, slavery is bondage, um, but bondage can be um, voluntarily uh, or voluntarily uh, given as well as being held in bondage. And we have to understand that there is a difference. Uh, but regardless to the difference, the God that we serve, is able to deliver us from them both. But we have to recognize who he is. Mm -hmm. And that's the crust of our lesson uh, today. It is about uh, God's people. And that's all of us, whether we believe it or not. It's about God's people that he created and then the fall of man that brought us into the bondage of sin. But the God of deliverance who loved us enough that he uh, came to deliver us from that that we had fallen into. But what, what's key to our deliverance is we can't have excuses. This story is about Moses, who God called to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. If you go uh, to chapter uh, 4, the uh, first thing is when God called uh, Moses, Moses began to make excuses. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. You know, when God uh, impress upon our hearts that it's time for us to move, you know, we all say, well, Lord, you know, as soon as I stop doing this, mm -hmm. then I'm going to come. You know, or oh Lord, when this happened, then I'll know. You know, we make those same excuses like God isn't able to do what he says he'll do. If God calls us, you understand? If God calls us out of slavery and we are slaves to whatever the source may be, whether it's cigarettes, whether it's alcohol, whatever it is, you know, whether it's hatred, you know, whether it's malice, it doesn't matter. If God calls us away from that, then God is able to deliver us from it. But we have to be willing uh, not to continue to volunteer our services to those things. That's why the word of God tells us that we have to love God above all things move away from it that you know when we love god we know he loves us because he's already shown us but when we love god to the point that we will no longer be enslaved to those things that keeps us from him then we'll see the power of god working in our lives amen and then again uh, the thing is to is to recognize that we are slaves to recognize that we are under bondage to recognize that there's something that has control over us and we can't control it. You see, a lot of us think that we are so strong, as teacher was saying, 
that I can stop when I get ready. I can quit when I get ready. And that's the common uh, answer that we all give and what we're really saying. I really can't stop. This, this thing has control over me. And sometimes, no matter how hard we try to break free of it, it just will not let us go. And see, and what happened, and a lot of times, we don't understand that we're in slavery. Well, teachers start giving some of the uh, things to let us know, fornication, uh, lying, stealing, murder, uh, uh, adultery, all these different things are the things that have us enslaved. And, and what happened is we don't recognize that these are things that are enslaving us. Because what God is saying, anything that draws us away from him, anything that tries to take his place, anything that we love more than him, it has us enslaved. It has us to a place where we can't help ourselves, even though we think we can. We think we're just doing this thing on our own. But no, this thing has the uh, 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 domination over us. If you don't believe what I'm saying, try to stop on, just try to stop. Just say to yourself, I'm not going to do this. And watch, whenever we try to stop, this thing, uh, like it grows, it gets stronger, it, it, it has a pull. It has something on us that makes us go back to help us realize that we're not who we are. And the thing about that is when God loves us so much and God does not want us to stay there, well, we have to understand God. God allowed things to happen in our lives that we will make a change, that we'll get tired of where we are and we'll look for something better. And the only thing better to look for is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only one. But first of all, to recognize where we are, and God has already made the provision for us to come out. We have to make a choice. We have to make a decision now, you know, to come out. But then teachers say it again, but sometimes we be in a place so long. And when we can come out, we start making excuses why we can't do it. Well, and you're right. Guess what? We can't do it on our own. But if we rely on God and we allow God to direct us and lead us and allow his spirit to uh, 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 empower us, then we can do these things. But first of all, it all starts with us. It starts with us recognizing and making a decision that I want to come out because this is what I said about myself. And I, I used to go to the clubs every weekend, drinking, smoking, and it got to be a rut. It got to be a rerun of me doing the same thing every week. And I said, Lord, you know, it got to be something better than this. You know, it got, God caused me to recognize that I got tired of doing it. And that's what God wants us to do, get tired of being where we are. And when we are, he can bring us out. Um, there, there, there is uh, uh, with man, as the scripture says, he says, mind, body, and soul. So there are three uh, dimensions of man. And what we confuse so often is <laughs> the man. You know, not mm -hmm. the mind or the soul, but the body. We feel like that's what God is concerned about. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need you to look at this because we have to put things in perspective. If you go to Genesis 3 and 19, it says, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Listen, till thou return to the ground. For out of the dust thou wast taken, for dust thou art, and uh, unto uh, dust thou, thou return. shalt return. So when you read this with understanding, it says God isn't concerned about the body but the mind and the soul. That is God's concern. But with our mind, we are unable to serve God without power, without authority. Display to us in the book of Exodus how Israel ended up enslaved, in slavery, because they did not have the power to be able to stand against the torment of sin. They were under a covenant with God. And you have to study the book of Exodus along with the book of Hebrews to understand that there has been a transition from law to spirit. For uh, the word of God says, for the time is now. 
that the Lord seeketh those that what? Will worship him in spirit and in truth. Certainly with our mind, but by the spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost. For we need it to be able to walk according to the word of God. Israel often said, all that God has said, we will do. But then they found themselves falling short, short of what their declarations were to God. God is a spirit. That's what his, the word says. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And this is where, this is why the Lord Jesus Christ came, that we might have the power of the authority of the Holy Ghost to bring our minds, our bodies under subjection to the spirit of the Holy Ghost, that we might be able to walk in the lighted path of God's word, and that we might be the people that God has called us to be. Remember, God called Israel that they might stand in the presence of all nations all nations, that all nations would know who he was. But too often we let him down because we don't stand in the power of his spirit and we return to our flesh. It happens. But the great thing about God is as he didn't take sin out of our flesh, he doesn't immediately eradicate the spirit out of us either. That spirit is there to convict us. It's not that, you know, when we get the Holy Ghost, we can't sin. Hmm. That's not it. We can, but the Holy Ghost will then convict us and then it will bring us if we will humble ourselves to repentance and we can come to the Lord. And now this is where Israel hmm. finds themselves in a place of torment and they are calling on the Lord. Again, you know, as teacher started out and what he just got through saying, um, how God breathed into man and he became a living soul. And he said again, that God's concern is not so much about the body because the body is going back to the dust, but the man's soul is eternal. Mm -hmm. And this is what God is concerned <clears throat> about. And to give us another understanding, remember when God said to Adam, the day you eat of the fruit, you mm -hmm. will surely die. Mm -hmm. And what happened, and we think about the physical death, but when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, they did not die. They were separated from God. They didn't die as we suppose death is supposed to be in the physical, mm -hmm. but they were separated from God. And this is what we're talking about today. We are separated from God in the spiritual because God is not there in us. And what happens is when we give ourselves to God to uh, 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 enhance or, or, or strengthen our spiritual man, then we are able to bring these bodies under subjection to live according to the, the purpose of God and according to God's will. But as long as the spiritual man is bound up, as long as the spiritual man is in bondage and in slavery, these bodies are running rapid. It do what it wants to do. Why? Because we have nothing to control it, nothing to keep it in line, from staying away from God. So as we allow God to bless us and we recognize it's not so much of the physical, but our spiritual man that is crying out that he wants to be delivered. When we can have him delivered and uh, uh, allow it God's word, then these bodies will be brought under subjection. As we study Israel, it's gonna talk, we're gonna talk about natural, mm -hmm. but then we have to transform it to uh, where we're into the spiritual because this is what they're doing. We have to learn to connect this as God is bringing them out of. And this is where uh, Egypt, Israel is down in Egypt. And, and the thing about it is, they're happy. They're complacent down there because things are going well right now. And, and that's what God is saying. He don't want us staying where we are. We, we were there for a season, but he does not want us to stay there. So, but Israel got complacent. So with Israel being complacent, not recognizing who God is, and even their leader not recognizing who God is, God wants us to know who he is. God wants us to know his authority, his power, and what he's able to do. As teacher then again said, and he allowed Moses to be a deliverer 
to bring the children out. But then we have excuses when God mm -hmm. wants to use us to deliver. Because the first thing we do, we start relying on our education, our nobility, our strength. God, I can't do this. Uh, who am I? You know, and we're right. We can't do these things. But God said, look, I'm not going to send you any place without me going with you. I'm going to uh, empower you with everything you need to accomplish the job I sent you to do. So when God sent um, Moses down into Egypt to deliver the children of Israel out of it, you know, but it baffled me when God told Moses, look, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh, but I'm going to harden his heart. And I'm saying to myself, why, why are you going to send me somewhere, God, to do a work for you? And you got the, making the opposition even harder against me because God said that this people don't know me and this Pharaoh don't know me. But before they come out of slavery or before we deliver, God said, I, you will know who I am because of the mighty works that I will do in your life. And what God does sometimes is a lot, again, I say he allows things to disturb our lives. He allows things to happen that we no longer like being where we are. And we recognize that we need a change. And that's when God will send a deliverer to bring us out of our bondage. Leaving slavery. So the story of Exodus and the deliverance of Israel, when we do exactly what Pastor said, move it from the story, you know, to reality. What does it really mean? Well, it's about Jesus delivering us from the bondage that we're in. If, if you uh, look at uh, Exodus 3, and I'm going to read just a few verses quickly, beginning at 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions mm -hmm. of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster. For I know their sorrows. Well, pastor mm -hmm. said it. I'm reading it. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're no longer happy where we are, then we cry to the Lord. He says, I must come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites, Parasites and the Habites and the Jebusites. Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me and I have also seen their oppression where, where with the Egyptians oppressed them with. Well. We don't deal with the Egyptians today, not in that sense. We deal with them in the sense of sin. Sin has oppressed us, and it keeps us away from God. But God used Moses as a type of Jesus in deliverance. And you say, well, that's blasphemy. Well, look at uh, Exodus 7 and 1. Listen to what God said. And the Lord said unto Moses, see. I have made thee mm -hmm. a god right. Right. to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Now, you tell God he blasphemed, <laughs> not me, because God said, I have made thee a god, both unto uh, Pharaoh and Aaron, because the pastor was saying, they were in a time much like we are today. We have moved, Israel had moved so far from God and be came so comfortable in doing all of the things that God told them not to do, they had forgotten about God. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you don't think we live in a society today where man, God is not the most important thing in man's life. And that's the society that we live in. We live in that type of Egyptian bondage, but we're in a different generation, a different era, but it's the same where uh, God, God is an afterthought until trouble hits. Mm -hmm. And that's how he was in Israel. They had become so comfortable living under the Egyptian bondage that they forgot about the God. You know, they were there because of their own doing. You know, we're where we are because of our own doing. I'm, and, I, and I know, you know, the, uh, uh, um, the word of God. Uh, says that, you know, the rain comes to the just as well as the unjust. And, and a lot of us say, well, I didn't do anything. Well, possibly you didn't. 
Listen, and I'll tell you, the word of God said, I didn't sin initially, right. but I'm still in sin because of what somebody else did. This world is the way it is. It may not necessarily be something you, you did. Mm -hmm. It's because of sin and we're all a part of it. So, you know, the, the people that were in Israel in slavery, maybe some of them were still adhering to the word of God, but because they were all of a nation, they all suffered the same thing. And because we're all in this world, we suffer the same thing. There are people filled with the Holy Ghost, but die every day with cancer. Mm -hmm. There are people filled with the Holy Ghost that have heart attacks. There are people filled with the Holy Ghost that are poor. I mean, it does, the Holy Ghost does not exempt you from these things. The Holy Ghost helps us recognize who God really is, because that's the whole purpose of this story. So Pharaoh would know who God was. That was Israel's purpose, like it is of those who have the Holy Ghost, is that the world might know that God still lives. And why? Because he lives in us. This is all about a song that was sung, you know, in worship and praise to God for the mighty works that he had done. Lord, I'm going to tell you something. You can't sing a greater song than that song you sang, and you don't even know what you're singing. When you begin to speak with other tongues, that praise that you give to God, only God understands. But you're so happy at that moment, you don't want to stop singing. Mm. And that's what this is all about. When they were delivered by the, that outstretched hand of God, they were so grateful to God. They just began to sing about the sovereign power of God and his ability to do exactly what he said. Pastor loves to say, don't always look like it. Don't always feel like it. Yep. But if we trust God, all the shenanigans that the magicians can do. Mm -hmm. I, I think he read it. It says, um, it, it says, the Lord is more powerful than things holding us in bondage. I don't care about the shenanigans of of, of Satan and his imps, God is more powerful. See, what, what we got to recognize is God gave Satan the power that he has. He gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> so if he has power, it's what God gave him. But then we, we study from the book of Job and we understand that Satan, even though he's got power, he still got to go to God and ask him, can he use it? Mm -hmm. We're in a safe place when we're in God. Israel was in a safe place, but they moved. And now they find themselves with a greater task of just living, and they cry out to the Lord. You know, um, I, just what Teacher was just saying about the authority that Satan has that God gave it to him. But if we could understand that God gave Satan this power for one reason, mm -hmm. not to destroy us. Right. Now, but Satan thinks mm -hmm. what he's doing is destroying us. But if we can just grab what God, God said, say, Jonathan, Jonathan McReynolds wrote a song. He said, may your trials and may your troubles drive you to God. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when Satan come doing what he's doing, it is God saying, you know what? Because of what, the, what he's doing, it's gonna drive you to me. Because of what he's doing, it's going to allow me to show you who I am mm -hmm. and what I'm able to do in your life. So in other words, Satan is like a, 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 a cattle driver. He's hurting us. He's driving us. He thinks he's doing us damage. Mm -hmm. And he's driving us straight into the arms of God if we recognize mm -hmm. what God is doing to us. But what happens so many times, we don't recognize the moving of God, how God is dealing with us. We get upset. We get angry. We don't want to come to God. And that's what Satan's plan is. But God said, no, if you just come to me, if you allow me to take over what he's doing, I will show you who I am. And then, in other words, what he's doing, God is showing his greatness in our lives. And what, happen, what happens is when God shows his greatness in our lives, it gives us testimonies. Mm -hmm. It tells us mm -hmm. what, what God can do for us in our lives. And as God gives us testimonies, guess what? We are able to share and to help others come out of the bondage that they're in because of what God has done for them in our lives. That's what Israel's job was supposed to be. Israel's job was to show the greatness of God to other nations. How do we show the greatness of God to mm. other people without, without going through? We have to go through some stuff. God allow these things to happen to strengthen us, to allow us to know who he is, to, to uh, um, 
In other words, but begin to to recognize that what God is doing is not us. Mm -hmm. It is God working in us and through us. That those that are going through the same thing that we are going through, may see us and recognize, what is it about you? Why, why are you able to, it's not me, it's the God that is in me. He brought me out of slavery. He delivered me, and he's able to do the same thing for you. But in order for people to come out, we must be representative. We must uh, not be relaxed where we are. We must always be excited about God and allow God to bring us out. And every time Satan bring a, a, a trial or a test to try to bring us down and people are looking at us, we stand firm in God that God will be glorified in us. It's just like Paul. When God said to him that you have to go to Rome to represent me and testify of my goodness, when Paul was going there, you know about the storm that he was in. Remember, they got shipwrecked on Meltia. And because of what God had promised Paul and because God, Paul was representing God, when Paul went to the, uh, pick up the wood for the fire and the snake bit him on the hand, Paul didn't worry about anything. Right? Paul went over and just shook the, the, the serpent off into the fire. But the people that were standing around, they will say, okay, this must be a guilty man. He's going to surely die. As they watched him, nothing happened to Paul. And by Paul living for the Lord and by Paul representing God, they said, this man, you know, there's something about this man. And this man, because of what he did and what happened in his life, drew people to Paul's side. So as we come out of slavery and as we live for the Lord and as we allow God to demonstrate his power in our lives, guess what? We are able then to, by our life living, to help draw others out of the conditions that they're in. But but our song, I, I remember the song used to sing when I came into church. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. He brought me out of my sin and my shame. He brought me out of darkness. That's my song to sing. And there was another, love lifted me. And I was sinking so deep, he said, it was the love of God that lifted me out of the conditions that I was in. One of our lessons from a long time ago, if it's good, hmm. share it with others. And we want others to feel what we, we feel. Now, our teacher says something again. Don't get misled that because we're lifted, because we're saved, that these bodies are not going to go through anything. These bodies are already condemned. Mm. These bodies are under a curse. And because they're under a curse, they're getting old, they're hurting, they're wearing down, they work by stuff. But guess what? But when the spirit is renewed, in, when we are renewed, that's us on the inside, then it helps these bodies to deal with whatever comes our way. But the ultimate goal is that we, on the inside, receive God's deliverance, receive God's salvation, that we live for him. And when we do that, then it makes uh, make it a little bit better on life in these bodies. So again, we're straight. It's not about hmm. the body that God is concerned about. I mean, that's why there is a new covenant. Mm -hmm. The covenant of law was, as the scripture said, it was our schoolmaster. So, yeah, listen, we study the story and the history of Israel so we can understand what God's intent is for those that he's called. Moses and them sang the song, you know, all the plagues that God allowed to come into Egypt was to show uh, Pharaoh that um, he was God mm -hmm. and he was the sovereign power that there was no one. I mean, Pharaoh was where he was because God elevated him to that point. Just like he, as I said earlier, uh, Satan has a power, but that power was given to him. Pharaoh had a power that was given to him. But listen, I want you to understand this. And, and if you read it and, and you really uh, do more than just read and you study the word of God, you have to see Pharaoh as a type of Satan, just mm -hmm. like you see Moses as a type of Jesus. Pharaoh's intent was to destroy God's people, keep them from moving towards God. So when they wanted to worship, then he uh, attacked them. You know, he aff uh, uh, afflicted them and he even wanted to increase their task. He tried just like uh, they did of Jesus. He tried to kill Moses. Uh, but God makes a way for those of us who will honor him and, and, and humble ourselves and receive him. He tried to kill him, but God mm -hmm. says, you cannot kill what belongs to me. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and again, a pastor said it so eloquently when he said, yeah, my body's going to die. You know what I'm saying? And even if it doesn't, Satan hadn't killed me. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I am an eternal being. The Bible says this, and in, 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 I think it's in, in the book of uh, 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 1 Corinthians, it says, for ye have this treasure 
in an earthen vessel. So mm -hmm. the body is an earthen vessel, but the treasure is on the inside. Mm -hmm. So we can't get hung up on the body because God isn't as concerned about that as he is concerned about the inner man. You know what I'm saying? So when we are filled with the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, our souls have to have an eternal resting place. It will rest. Well, I start to say it will rest someplace, but no, it will only rest one place. And that's with the Lord. Now, it will live mm -hmm. in eternity. But if you are not with the Lord, you will be in torment, just like a Pharaoh was trying to torment uh, Israel. Now, you know, Pastor said, and, and it does, it, when, when you first begin to study, it, 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 it begs to differ. Why in the world, Lord, do you want me to live in the presence of other people um, <laughs> and, and sing the song of being delivered when you allow these things to happen to me? Well, that's the purpose. That is the purpose. You know what I'm saying? Because God has not responded of people right. so now if God delivered me from everything that Satan has to offer it wouldn't be hard to convince people uh, to live for the Lord but but the challenges is what God calls us to do it I mean they're simple and we we ain't gonna teach this but I just want you to understand you know when when it begins with you know, following the ordinance of God, just like Israel had to follow them. You know, when, you know, you know, and I've, I've heard it teaching, I don't know where people get stuff from, but, you know, when somebody says, well, you know, tithe are no longer yeah. a part of uh, the church today, it is about your free will offering. <laughs> well, so in the Old Testament, you tithe and gave free will offering. So God going to drop a part of it and keep a part? No, mm -hmm. we still give a free will offering a Tithe doesn't have anything to do with your offering. That's a commandment of God. Right. Your free will offering, God told you to purpose that in your mm -hmm. heart. Right? Right. The rest of it, God ain't discussing with you. <laughs> that's something you got to do. Well, see, that's a challenge. And Satan will use that to keep you from living for God. Well, I don't see why I got to give all my money to the preacher. You ain't yeah. giving me nothing. <laughs> nothing. You don't give me nothing. I'm sorry. Right. I'm saying, and, and listen, now, and I didn't even know this. We had a pastor who said that uh, muzzle not the ox that treadeth the corn, mm -hmm. you know, and a man is worthy of his hire. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If a stipend that you give me is what I'm worthy of, <laughs> I can tell you this. Y'all don't think much of me. Mm -hmm. That's not why I'm here for money. God says, I'll take care of you. And he has tremendously. You know what I'm saying? He has, not with uh, the support from the church or an organization. God says, I'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. So, and I, I want you to understand, so, but these are the challenges of those. Just like Israel. Israel wanted to be like everybody else. And that's what the church wants. They want to be like everybody else. And you can't be. And so, yeah, God, you know, we might think God don't allow plagues. Now, it ain't frogs and flies and, and, and lice and, and turning water to blood and all of it. Yeah. Right, yeah, you know, it's not all of this. But the plagues still come. Yes, it is. They come in our lives. And God wants to know. He wants you to know who he is. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what Pastor said. He, because I, I got to change the story to reality. Mm -hmm. He wants me to know who he is. And at the same time, I'm finding out who he is. He's also showing somebody else who he is. And if, you know, if, if, if you know, that, that's why, that's why uh, the word of God says, and Job never lost his integrity. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? He don't do that. You don't do that. You know, he said, why would you tell me to go? And then on the, in the same <laughs> breath, you tell me you're going to harden this heart. Yeah. That's for purpose. Mm-hmm. It is. It is the purpose. <laughs> but I, I want, uh, again, teacher said something about bringing it to reality and helping us understand what we we're talking about. And some people might say, what is Moses and Israel and Egypt got to do with us? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's break it down this way. Let's look at Egypt as the world. Mm -hmm. Egypt is the world. 
and what now we are bound up in stuff even though right now we we're, we're, we're satisfied in it and it, it feels good because to the flesh that, that's what it feels good to and we want to cater to the flesh but God loves us so much that God is not concerned for the he want our spiritual man to live forever he wants it to be free so what God does God allow these plagues to come in Egypt that we as the people they see who God is and that uh, the one that's supposed to be the ruler He's not as dominant as we think he is. That there's one greater than who he is. And he shows that his power is more dominant than any power than that the devil could ever show us or give us. So now, he allowed these plagues to come for us to get tired of where we are mm -hmm. and to come out of where we are to go to a place of freedom, to a place that he has prepared for us. Okay, so now he said, okay, now I'm gonna do this mighty thing after all these plagues have come I'm going to send this last plague to show you and mm -hmm. to show the world who I am. And this last plague is to make a distinction between you and them is that you have to seal your doorpost with the blood. Mm -hmm. All right. And he said, when the angel of death come, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. All right. Now, today, we're not taking blood sealing ourselves. But what happened is Jesus Christ, because what they did in Egypt, the, the Israelite killed the lamb and, and applied the blood to the door. Jesus Christ has died for us already and applied the blood to our lives. And what we have to do now, we have to apply the blood to our doorpost, to our spiritual man, to us, that when the angel of death come again, he will pass over us because there's a distinction between us and them. How do you apply the blood to your doorpost in your life? Well, mm. you've heard me and teacher go over this thing so many times <laughs> that it's like a broken record. Repent. Baptize in Jesus' name. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and speak into him. That's the blood mm. that is applied to our lives. Because guess what? This world is going to be destroyed, utterly destroyed as Egypt was, it, it, it fell in his army. And what's going to think, and what happened is, if we, if we don't comply with God's rules and God's regulation of the blood, because he said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. If the blood is not applied to our lives, he's going to pass, he's not going to pass over us, he's going to destroy us. But if the blood is applied, then we, it will pass over us that we will be saved. So in other words now, Again, we said again, these bodies are going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. But this person that lives on the inside, Isaiah said, I think it was Isaiah, he said, look, no weapon formed against you shall mm -hmm. prosper. And the Lord gave me a word, who is you? So in other words, now, there are some weapons out there, mm -hmm. guns and knives that will <laughs> kill these bodies, graveyard mm -hmm. dead. But it cannot achieve the purpose that That's the right. people wanted to do. It can kill this, mm -hmm. but it can't kill me. Right. And what happened is we have to recognize who me, who you are, you know, because this is not us. First Corinthians, no, Second Corinthians 5 and 1 else says, if this earthly house of this yes. time not going to be dissolved, dissolved, I have a new house. In other words, God said, now don't be so upset mm -hmm. when this get old. Don't be so, so upset if mm -hmm. this being destroyed. Why? I've made you a new house. So in other words, what we have to be concerned about is the person on the inside. And the way we give that person life is through the repentance, through the baptism, through receiving the gift from the Holy Ghost. Teacher said it again. Even though we do, we do all this, we're not exempted from anything. Mm -hmm. but, but the things that do come because we have the blood applied to us, it helps us to live in whatever situation, whatever circumstances come up against us. The Spirit gives us the ability to live with it. So that's how we draw others. When they know what we're going through, when, we, when they see it take others out, and sometimes it may take us out. But then it doesn't take us out complaining. It doesn't take us out grudgingly. We, we are still lifting up the name of Jesus, even in the conditions that we're in. How are you doing that? Because he is on the inside. He, the, the Paul, Paul said, though this outward man mm -hmm. perish, mm -hmm. my inward man is renewed every day. So when my inward man is renewed, it gives strength to this old, beat up, sin, broken <laughs> body. And guess what? But it, 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 I have come to the conclusion, it ain't going nowhere. Back to the dust is where it's mm -hmm. going. So there's no need for me to cling mm -hmm. hold to this thing here and try to do all I can do with this because guess what? All I do to it is going back to the dust. But that spiritual man, for the Bible says, bodily exercise profit us little. Mm -hmm. But what we do for the spiritual man is what's going to count. And when Jesus come back for the rapture of his church, he's not looking for this. Mm -hmm. He's looking for that inner man because guess what? He says in, in John 14, there, I got many mansions, so there's a new house for me there. Mm -hmm. So when I leave this, and I got someplace else to live. Amen, amen. So it's about uh, wanting to be delivered from sin, mm -hmm. from slavery, and knowing that there is one able. That's what God was showing, that he was able to deliver Israel out of the bondage that they were in. He's also showing us that he's able to deliver us 
from the sin that we are in bondage of. God has the power to do it, and he will do it if we allow him. I, I want to just share just a few of these scriptures with you uh, that um, might make the transition. You know, people are still trying to live solely in the Old Testament by the law, but you can't. If you go to Hebrews 9 chapter, I just want to start reading at verse 14. It says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Pastor was talking about applying uh, the blood to the door post of our lives, not to the doorpost of our house, but to our lives. And he, again, uh, shared with you what scripture says of what we must do. In verse 15, it says, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. So that means there is a new will of God. It says uh, that by means of death, right? Now, if you go to Romans 6, chapter, it tells us about this death. You know, we can't live any longer in sin. When we're baptized, we, are, we take him on by death, that natural death, that cleansing. And then we rise in a new life to walk in the newness of life. It says, for the redemption of the transgressions that are under the first testament. Now, talks about the law. They which are called might receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Mm. See, it's not talking about no land. <laughs> I'm saying that's not what this is about anymore. This is an eternal inheritance. This is about being able to live from the. It's not just being delivered out of Egypt right. and going into the promised right. land. This is being delivered from Egypt and going into the promised land. Mm -hmm. All right. But the promised land is no longer a land, natural land. It is being in that eternal glory with Jesus Christ. It says, for where a New Testament is, there must also be a necessity, be of a necessity, be the death of a tester. You understand? Your will has no power until you die. All right. So when Jesus died, it brought in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. It says, for a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the tester liveth. So Jesus died that the New Testament would take power. And that New Testament is not, not we, we don't, he says, I didn't come to destroy the law. The law had its purpose so that we could learn what God really wanted from us and live in the presence of others that they might know who God is and know what God wants from all of us. And so we sing our song of testimony. I think uh, a part of our lesson was about this man who had uh, started life uh, in a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. You know, he was homeless and lived in his car and, and then he got saved and the Lord called him to be a pastor that had about three or four people mm -hmm. in the church. And, you know, all he ever did was tell of the glory of God. He sung his testimony song over and over and over again. And I know, listen, we live in a time today. If you testify too many times about the same thing, people get tired of you. But that's all he did. And some friends of his came. They were in town and they visited his church and they know when he went there, there wasn't anybody, but the church had just continuously grown. You know, it grew and grew, and they asked him, what, what's your secret? He said, I don't have a secret. He said, well, what do you do? He says, all I do is praise God. He said, I sing my testimony song. And see, there's always somebody, not people. People that are in the church, they don't want to hear you testify. They don't want to hear you praise God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know why it is. They just, they get tired of it. But people in the world, they're looking for somebody right. to tell the greatness yeah. of God. And you mm -hmm. can tell them that God is a deliverer. And listen, when I tell my story, it might not mean nothing to anybody else. But listen, I sing praises to God 
because Lord have mercy. If it wasn't for the abundance of mercy of God in my life, uh, li listen, my mind cannot even conceive where I would be. What I would be doing if I was even in my right mind, mm -hmm. if I was even alive, but because of the mercy of God, you understand, I am here today and yes, I am grateful that God saved me. I don't care that you are or not. Well, he didn't save you when he saved me. Mm -hmm. He saved me. And when God drew me out of that water like he drew Moses out, Moses was supposed to die. You were supposed to. <laughs> but he drew Moses out. Yes. Lord have mercy. And then, see, see, we couldn't tell the whole story today anyhow, but after God drew Moses out, drew Moses from his physical death, sent him to the king's palace, Lord have mercy. We walking in heavenly places. <laughs> Ain't got no business, no right, but because of Jesus right, Christ. Right. Understand? He, he has put us in places that we can walk. You know, God placed us in places in this world where we ain't got no business, but we can learn that mm -hmm. we can use what we learn mm -hmm. to be in service mm -hmm. of God. But listen, don't be making excuses. Well, I don't know what the Lord want me to do. He done told you. Mm -hmm. He tell us all. God is not going to call us to do something, not give us everything we need to do it with, and not put us on the mission. We might stop. We might not do it. And we might have all kinds of excuses. But that's not the kind of God we serve. When God applies the blood to our lives, it is in perfection. It doesn't have to be done anymore. And that's what we look to him for. That's the kind of God that we serve. Listen, wonderful story, but if you can't make the transition from the story to real life, it won't help you much. Lord, I wish we could have done it, but we can't. There's just too much to tell. It is. But it, again... It's the, it's the greatness of God. And, it, and, and, and when we can understand what has been done, what God is doing, hmm. because, you know, as teacher was talking about how, and see, and what, clean, what, what gives the outer man direction hmm. is the inner man being strong. Mm -hmm. And when the inner man is strong, when the inner man knows who God is, and when the inner man follows God's direction, the outer man is strong. It does not stop the auto man from going through anything, but because you recognize who God is, that whenever the auto man uh, 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 is going through something, it gives God mm. the opportunity to show us and to show others what he can do through us as we're going through what we're going through because we have not the strength of our own self to do what we're doing. And as we do this, God, people recognize the strength and the power of God. Paul says it this way, when I'm weak, that I'm made strong, that the ecstasy of God may be shown in me and through me in what I find myself going through. Because guess what? By all rights, we should be dead. Mm -hmm. But as he said, God drew us from the water. He drew us and he's given us life. Now, he, he, and he's given us this opportunity to represent him and to show others of, of his greatness. The, you know, and, and one of the things I, I've come to understand now, the greater the fight, the bigger the blessing. Because what God has done, God has delivered us. And what now God has said, look, since I've delivered you and I set you free, I've given you a message of reconciliation. I want you now to deliver us, try to bring as many out as you can out of the bondage that they're in. And sometimes what we do, we want to give up because the fight is so hard. Because guess what? If the devil is fighting us that hard, we must be making some headway. We must be doing something right. We must be about to make a break in his kingdom. Now, if he's not bothering us, mm. he's not even worrying about us. You're not even doing enough to put a dent. But if he's fighting you, say, Lord, thank you, because there's something I'm doing right. There's something I'm, I'm making an impact. I'm making an improvement somewhere along the line because the devil is fighting me so hard. But this is what happened. You know, when teacher said about the church, that in the church we hear so much, we, we done got so used to it that it's nothing new. It's nothing different. But in the world, it's something fresh. It's something renewed. It's something I never heard before. There's something, you know, is about what he's saying. But we in the church hmm. can listen to what they're saying and, and, and relate to ourselves what is being said, what is being done. We should be getting happy all over again. It's like the disciples when they got in Acts, I believe it was the third chapter, so when they got whipped for spreading the gospel, for spreading the good news, and they got beaten. 
they went back to the house and rejoiced that they were found worthy enough to be whipped mm -hmm. for carrying the gospel. And so when they spread their testimony, the house was filled again. Mm -hmm. So what happened is when we can rejoice with our brothers and sisters, if it's the same testimony over mm -hmm. and over again, if we can rejoice with them in the midst, mm -hmm. uh, in the house, guess what? The house can overflow again. If we come saying they saying the same thing, they, they, we giving glory to God for what God is. Right. We're singing our right. song for what God has done. We're singing our song for what God has brought up, brought us out of. Well, if maybe maybe God didn't bring you out of enough that you can rejoice and be glad of. Maybe you see. And sometimes we we won't. Teacher says something. We said I ain't never done nothing wrong. Well, that this that may, may be the case. You don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't curse, you don't do all that kind of stuff. But there's a generational curse that's passed down. We inherit this thing. We are born into sin. And we are born into sin. Our spiritual man is separated from God. Jesus Christ come to break that, to bring union back with us and the Father again by reuniting us, by saving this spiritual man that's on the inside of us. And this is what he's looking for. This is what he want to do. So as we uh, 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 celebrate, our freedom. Let's not get tired of a person singing their same song over again. Let's rejoice along with them. And as they sing their song are coming out, think about when he brought us, brought you out, that you can sing along with them. It might be the same old song, but guess what? You should get a new fresh hallelujah every time you hear that song. So it is about the power of God to deliver us. Mm -hmm. And when we accept that, when we are grateful to God for the work that he's performed through his son Jesus Christ to come into the world and to deliver us from the bondage and slavery of this world and its sins. And we know, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know, because there were 10 plagues. Mm -hmm. Those plagues did not affect the children of Israel they were so that Egypt, the Egyptians would know who God was. You might not see some of the plagues, but even after the children left Egypt, <laughs> they got thirsty. Mm -hmm. They got hungry. Before then, they ran up against something they thought they could not overcome, the Red Sea. But these things are that we might know who God is, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that all of us experience the same things in life. Now, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But there are things in each of our lives so others who are experiencing the same things that we experience will know if we sing our song that the God that we serve is able and that's the purpose of uh, the true testimony this isn't about those who are trying to tell a greater story right. than the other this is about your gratefulness to god for delivering you when you're happy about not being a slave to sin listen you're gonna say something hmm. i studied my lesson and 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 this week, and, and I, I just, I, I, I was reminiscing about those of you who can recall um, the movie Roots, when actually slavery was introduced to the world as it most likely was, where most people didn't want to acknowledge. But the character, uh, Kunta Kinte, hmm. When I was reminiscing about it, it just said something to me that this young man wanted freedom so bad, so bad, that he ran as many times as he could to get away from what he was in until they took his feet. No, no, I don't know if you, you, you're getting what mm -hmm. I'm telling you. That's how bad you got to want to be freed from what you're not. But, but the thing I, I was asking myself, and this is because this is what we do. Well, because we don't know where we're going. I mean, this man, they brought him over here on a ship. 
Even if he had gotten away, where was he going? He didn't know anybody, and because of slavery, even if he got away, he was going to get caught mm -hmm. and enslaved again. But yet he wanted freedom so bad. From, from what he knew, mm -hmm. <laughs> he wouldn't let anything stop. That's, what, that's the heart we have to have for God to deliver us out of what we're in. Drinking can't be that great. Smoking can't be that great. Lying and cheating can't be that great. Man, there's a freedom in God. And, and, and you know, the great thing about the story is before God uh, brought each, uh, Israel out, he said, go get something from them that you're going to need later on. That's right. <laughs> That's right. God will provide for you. Favor. Yes. So, it's a great story, but it's got to be reality. Amen. Father, we come this morning to say thank you, O oh God, for this lesson. And we thank you for the hearts and the minds that were touched, Lord, to recognize that there is a better way. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to see our conditions. And we thank you, O oh God, for giving us a mind to make a choice and to make a chance, and to give us another chance. Now, Father, bless us as what we have heard that we move, Lord, that we do not hesitate or let doubt slip into our minds or we let questions about how we're going to do or achieve these things stop us from achieving the freedom that you have already, oh God, applied to our lives. All we have to do is accept it. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for knowing who we are and knowing what we need when we don't even know ourselves, yes. oh Lord. We thank you, oh God, for loving us beyond measure, Lord. Lord, God, Lord we, we, we just don't know. Mm -hmm. But Lord, you know. And we ask you to bless us, oh God, in our ignorance, oh God that we follow your guidance and your direction. Oh God, put people in our lives, oh God, that, oh God, that know your word, that know you, Lord, that help us in the situations that we are in. Lord, for we are babies, we need guidance, we need direction, oh God, and we don't know. But Lord, you have blessed others that have come this way. Lord, they have been through and they understand, God, your working and your moving. God, bless us and align us with them, oh God, that they may help us, oh God, achieve this freedom and walk in what you have already purposed for us. And Lord God, that we that already have it, oh God, bless us that we learn to appreciate what you've done, that we never forget what you've done, that we be just excited about what you did right now as we were back then. Father, continue to use us for your glory and for your honor, and whatever comes our way, Lord, bless us that we may stand in victory, oh God, because you already declared, declared that we have it, and Lord God, and there's no failure in you. Bless God that we represent you in every aspect of our lives, irregardless of what we find ourselves going through, God, we allow you to be seen in us. Do it for your glory and for your honor. Father, now, God, unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God, I say to be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now henceforth and forevermore. For it's in Jesus' name, Lord God, people say together, amen. 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 So we're, we're grateful to the Lord for, again, another wonderful lesson. And, uh, you know, we, we get a little arrogant sometimes and we say this, you know, we know that you were blessed, not because of Pastor Rogers mm -hmm. or myself, God, but Lord. because of the word of God. Yes. If you hear it, the word of God says in uh, Revelations uh, 1 and 3, mm -hmm. you are blessed if you read, you hear, and then you do mm -hmm. the things that are, that are written in the prophecy. So if you hear it, if you'll do it, we know that you're blessed. And we just want you to keep us in prayer. We continue to pray for those that are sick, uh, those who are going through. And we also praise God for the work that he's doing in their lives. You understand? Because God is able. He's able. And he continues to show himself strong. And we're grateful for that. Continue to pray for us uh, that God will uh, continue this uh, opportunity and uh, giving us this platform that we might come and share out of the word of God with you and hopefully that you will continue uh, to support the ministry we we never ask you for anything financially mm -hmm. because that's not what this is about it is about supporting us in sharing the word of God being a part of uh, the uh, uh, ministry doing that and if you do that for us we're grateful and because the same God we serve, uh, he's, he supplies all of our needs, Amen. and we're grateful to him, and he'll open doors for us. So that's why you don't hear us asking for money, mm -mm. because we want souls to be saved. That's what this is all about. So pray for us, keep us in prayer, and we will continue to pray for you.
Amen. Peace out.